Welcome. Today we shall look into another type of separation process that is used in the natural gas industries and that is uh, by the distillation. In this particular lecture, we shall be learning about the applications of distillation in natural gas systems, the distillation separation operation, some brief about them and the components of distillation column and the types of distillation column. These are some brief ideas which will be helping you to analyze the processes. Now coming to the applications of this distillation in natural gas systems, we have basically go it for do for acid gas removal like carbon dioxide and hydrogen sulphide and uh, nitrogen removal. Now distillation separation some basics about them that the basis of the separation is the difference in the volatilities of the components of a mixture about which we learned earlier that uh, we talk about the relative volatilities and those mixtures which have relative volatilities quite away from unity or one can be separated by distillation. And the process requirement for distillation are some creation of vapor and liquid phases. Distillation can only be carried out when we have vapor and liquid phases, we cannot carry out distillation only with single phase. So, to create these two phases, what we can do that we can either partially vaporize a liquid feed or partially condense a vapor feed or in the complete or partial liquid vaporization in the reboiler, we shall see what a reboiler is and similarly we can have complete or partial vapor condensation in the condenser. About this reboiler and condenser we shall be learning a bit later. Then we have the mixing of two phases that means after creating the two phases we have to ensure that the two phases come to very intimate contact for long enough time so that all the components whether the higher volatile components can give, uh, have a chance to go to the vapor phase preferentially and the lower boiling point uh, higher boiling point components can have time to come to the liquid phase preferentially. So, we these phases have to be contacted intimately for long enough time to effect the separation. And lastly, we should have enough surface area. This surface area is needed so that the two phases can come to intimate contact with each other. Now, what is the uh, distillation column? In distillation column, we carry out distillation and this is a cascaded device to carry out several condensations and evaporations subsequ uh, uh, on different uh, plates or trays. Here we see that the separation of these components of having close boiling points uh, can be done in this column. Understand this, if the boiling points are quite uh, different then we do not need distillation, simple condensation or vaporization can effect the separation. So, in case of distillation we need that the boiling point should be close enough, and, but not too close so that the relative volatility do not approach unity. Now, what we find that uh, doing this um, contacting the vapor becomes richer in the more volatile components while the liquid becomes richer in the less volatile component. The temperature and pressure keeps changing in the column from the top to bottom we find both the temperature and the pressure increase. Temperature is lowest at the condenser and so is the pressure. Similarly, the temperature is highest uh, and also the pressure is also highest at the reboiler. The pressure is lower at, uh, lower at the top because as the vapor passes uh, uh, flows upward, what it finds that it finds some pressure drop uh, along the column height. So, the pressure starts decreasing from the bottom to top and at the top we are condensing that means we are putting the lowest temperature in the column to condense the outgoing vapor from the column and at the bottom we are providing heat to vaporize the outgoing liquid from the column. So, that is why we find so there is a gradient in the temperature as well as in the pressure. Now, the basic streams which are needed in a typical distillation column are a feed stream. The feed stream will be having two or more than two components and which will be again separated into two or more product streams. Then there could be more than one feed stream in a column. We have some bottom product 
in this bottom product it will always be generally liquid and this will be containing the heavier components in a mixture then we have the overhead distillate product and this will be having the lighter components and this may be obtained as liquid a vapor or both as liquid and vapor there could be many possible cuts side cuts that means from various points locations of the column we can have several other products this is especially true for the refineries now here is a typical configuration of distillation column first we find that this column has one feed coming inside and then according to the feed location we are dividing the column into two sections first is the rectifying section this rectifying section is also known as enrichment section and this is the portion above the feed and it serves to remove the lighter component from the upflowing vapor that means what will happen the lighter components from the liquid phase will go more to the vapor phase so that is how we are enriching the vapor with the lighter component and then we have the stripping section which is below the feed stage and it serves to remove the lighter component from the um, down flowing liquid that means the lighter components the liquid is coming down the whatever lighter components or high boil, low boiling point components are there they will be going more from the liquid phase to the vapor phase thereby making the liquid richer in the uh, high boiling point components next we have uh, this uh, top vapor is taken to a condenser and what does the condenser do this condenser this it condenser uh, condenses the overhead vapor partially or completely and it sends a something a liquid called reflux so this is the uh, uh, condenser and the condenser may be a partial condenser or may be a total condenser and let us now look into the difference between this partial condenser and total condenser total condenser means the vapor coming out from the column is completely condensed whereas in case of partial condenser the vapor is partially condensed the distillate in the total condenser is a liquid whereas in case of partial condenser it may be vapor or it may be a mixture of liquid and vapor this vapor and liquid mixture uh, means that i can have both the li uh, liquid and the vapor as the product stream separately then the in a total condenser the distillate and the reflux liquid have the same compositions whereas in case of partial condenser the liquid and vapor have different com uh, compositions and at the best this liquid and vapor from the partial condenser can come to an equilibrium that means a partial condenser can effect some more separation in addition to the separation that is ob obtained in the actual column then the total condenser does not really add to any number of stages but whereas the partial condenser because it can effect some more separation so it may act as an additional stage about which we shall be learning later now here are the configurations of the total condenser what we find here that the vapor is coming here in the condenser and it is completely uh, condensed to liquid and we are getting the distillate as the liquid whereas in partial condenser the vapor goes into the condenser and here we find that both liquid and vapor are getting separated and this is a phase separator from which we are getting the vapor distillate and the liquid portion is refluxed back to the column now we see that there is a reflux drum which is carrying the uh, condensed liquid from the condenser and what its job is it holds the condensed vapor to provide the reflux and serves as a distribution point that means we are keeping the condensed vapor in the reflux drum and we are adjusting the amount of reflux to be given to the column and so the distillate amount will also be be changing now 
at the bottom the bottom liquid comes down and then it goes to a reboiler the reboiler is operated by adding some external heat as the condenser is also operated by taking out the heat by some kind of uh, cooling medium so in this reboiler what we the reboiler what it does that it re vaporizes the bottom liquid either partially or completely and send a part of the whole vapor to the column okay and then what we find that from the reboiler we are getting the bottom product so this is a typical configuration of a distillation column variations may be found as per the different types of separations by distillation in different applications now there are various types of uh, distillation column broadly they are divided into two types one is the tray column and is the packed column and that now let us see what is the tray column or plate column these tray columns are having some assembly of trays or my plates and the what happens that the vapor and liquid the vapor is moving going from the bottom to top while liquid is coming from the top to bottom they are contacted on each of each plate they contact on each plate and uh, what we find that during their contact in this column these uh, they get intimately mixed and the liquid flows down the tower under the force of gravity whereas the vapor moves up the column due to slight pressure drop from bottom to top so across the plate there will be some pressure drop and due to this pressure drop the vapor will be able to move upward uh, and the vapor passes through the uh, some openings in the plate we shall see the construction of plates so we will find there are some openings in the plate through which the vapor comes out and the liquid the design is such that we do not want the liquids to come out through the pores uh, this uh, holes in the uh, plates they will be coming through some other means about which we shall see later on so here we have the typical figure of a plate column here we find there are this is a plate these two are plates and these plates have these holes through which the vapor moves out and what we find that at the end one end of the plate we have the weir this weir helps in retaining some of the liquid on the plate and without the weir what will happen we will not be able to retain the liquid and if we do not have enough liquid on the plate there will not be proper mixing between the vapor and the liquid so this weir is put here and this height of the weir has to be also adjusted so that we have just enough amount of liquid because if we put too much of height of the weir we will find that it will be difficult for the liquid to come out of the particular plate so this weir is provided to retain some of the liquid and then what happens the liquid comes out through this particular channel what we call the downcomer or downspout so through this particular downspout the liquid comes out and arrives at the lower plate and what happens meanwhile that the vapor goes through the holes and then get mixed in the with the liquid here there the these bubbles are showing that the vapor bubbles are getting mixed with the liquid and after enough mixing these vapors are traveling out and they are traveling out of this particular liquid and these they are then moving to the upper plate and that is how this whole column operates there are many design issues which about which i am not talking about but this is the overall configuration of a tray column now we have again various types of trays for example we have a sieve tray this sieve tray is very simplest of the trays and what it consists of that simply we have a tray with with some sieves or holes and through these holes the vapor is coming out and the liquid is passing over this plate let me mention that uh, this uh, liquid is not coming out through the holes because we are putting enough pressure of the vapor to prevent the liquid from coming out through the holes that means if there is any kind of decrease in the vapor flow rate we may, we may find that the liquid may come out of these holes and that is the situation we want to avoid now here is a real life sieve tray with a weir over here and this is the downcomer downspout and here we can see that these are the holes on the sieve plate next we come to the bubble cap tray which has been designed so that we can take care of some of the difficulties with the plate 
uh, this sieve trays because sieve tray has this um, difficulty of having we cannot have too low a liquid otherwise what will too low a vapor flow rate otherwise what will happen the liquid will come out through the holes so for that bubble tray was proposed and in this particular tray we find that the design has been modified again we have some hole to vapor to come out but now the holes are covered with what we call the riser or the chimney now what happens this um, vapors are coming out from the holes and then they take a turn here and then these chimneys are covered with a what we call cap now in these caps we find that these caps have some serrations or some these serrations with some kind of openings in the cap so these vapors are coming out and they are coming out through these serrations and bubbling through the liquid so in this manner what we are finding we are able to prevent the liquid to come out through the holes even when the vapor flow rate comes down so here is the uh, photograph of an actual bubble cap tray now this particular tray works quite well only thing is this this cap movement up and down will be decided by the uh, flow, vapor flow rate now you can see that to make the uh, this cap move up we need enough inertial force for the vapor to push it up so this gives some kind of uh, uh, pressure drop to the vapor now these are the various kinds of designs of the bubble caps the last kind of tray which is still an improvement over over the bubble cap tray is a valve tray the improvement comes in the way of reducing the pressure drop across the uh, valve so what we find that the valve cap is again similar to that but in a, in a simpler construction this this is the valve and what happens this valve just moves up and down this thing along with this particular riser so this uh, whenever the vapor flow is not there this valve this will sit down on the tray and whenever some vapor flow is there it will push the uh, valve up and the vapor will flow out and the vapor will not be taking any kind of turns through this valve so that way we are finding that we are able to reduce the pressure drop across the plate and here we find that depending on the vapor flow rate the valve will either move up or come down and this is the uh, figure of an actual valve tray after this tray columns and we find that these are the various ways of comparisons because uh, these three types of trays are available so these are being compared based on the capacity efficiency turn down ratio that is the ratio of the highest to lowest flow rate the entrainment entrainment means that we want that when the vapor is moving out of the liquid it should not carry along with it any liquid otherwise we will be losing the liquid also we shall be losing the separation efficiency so this entrainment means the entrainment of the liquid by the vapor and we want to reduce it so on that respect also we differentiate these various types of trays and then we have the pressure drop that is that is very important because it decides the pumping power then the cost the maintenance how much maintenance is required for all of them the ease of maintenance the fouling tendency the effects of the corrosion and design other information so we find that based on these various parameters we can uh, differentiate between these various kinds of trays these are also given in more detail in some uh, literature on this distillation column so i am not going into in the detail right now as and when required we shall be talking more about these uh, uh, topics after this we come to the packed column so in the packed column what we have we have some solids divided solids which are just packed inside the column these solids can be of different sizes can be made from different types of materials and uh, their basic purpose is to provide the surface area the packing the liquid will be flowing over the surface of this packing and the vapor will pass over across it so that on this packing surface there will be the contact between the liquid and the vapor so we have to design the packing in such a manner that we can maximize the area for contact that is why we will find that there are different types of packings the, so what happens that the liquid flows down and during this they have the contact between the vapor and for we want to have large 
सरफेस एरिया पर यूनिट वॉल्यूम ऑफ द कॉलम व्हाट वी कॉल द स्पेसिफिक सरफेस एरिया फॉर मैक्सिमाइजिंग द मास ट्रांसफर फॉर इफिशियंट मास ट्रांसफर एंड सेपरेशन सो हियर वी फाइंड अ टिपिकल पैक्ड कॉलम हियर वी फाइंड दैट वी हैव द पैकिंग्स एट द बोथ द रेक्टिफाइंग सेक्शन एंड द स्ट्रिपिंग सेक्शन एंड हियर वी हैव सम सपोर्ट ग्रिड टू सपोर्ट द पैकिंग so to make them stay in place and then we have some liquid distributor so that the liquid which is coming coming can be distributed across the cross section of the column and then we have some demister pad this demister pad is serving the purpose of reducing the entrainment that is if there is any kind of liquid carry over by the vapor those liquid are trapped and they are sent back to the column so we have all this but this kind of The things in the uh, packed column. Now we see the various types of packings available. One is the random packing, and there is the structured packing. So let us see what are random packings are. Here we find that they are randomly. The name comes because these kind of packings are come coming in small small pieces, and they are randomly uh, put in the packing uh, in the in the pack bed. So we have different types of random packings like rashi ring, burl saddle, interlock saddle, and so on and so forth. So all these packings are have been proposed by different researchers, by different industries, and some of them are also proprietary in nature. So all these packings they are differentiated in terms of the surface area they offer, and also in terms of the pressure drop because pressure drop is a very important consideration. in designing of any of these columns so all these packings will be providing us different surface areas as well as they will be giving us different types of pressure drop so depending on the particular case we have to choose a particular type of packing and there can could be many more packing other than the ones which are shown here so after this random packings we have structured packing and in this case we see that these packings are stru called structured because there is a particular pattern in which they have been made and as you can see from these that there is a the flow path is very very structured which is unlike the case of random packings where in random packing the flow path is the flow trajectory is not well defined it can be random but in this case we can see that the flow path is well defined that the flow will happen only through these points so this is how this uh, this flow takes place and when the flow path is well defined what happens in this that we are getting lower pressure drop so other than the lower pressure drop this kind of structured packing also offers uh, better uh, contact between the two phases so after the structured packing uh, this as i said that these are giving more specific surface area as well as lower pressure drop in that way we find that structured packings have better efficiency than the random packings however because of their construction they are more expensive than the random packings so both these packings are available and used commercially but depending on the particular situation we have to choose one or the other nowadays the industries are slowly migrating towards the structured packing now these are the various references in which you can find uh, the details about all these types of uh, the topics covered in this thank you